Welcome to 805 Sports Talk. I'm Joe Bailey. Alongside me is the Lee Central Coast News Sports staff, Kenny Kress, Elliot Stern, and Jacob Rayburn. And it's that time of year. It's about mid-June when uh, the baseball season heats up. We got the MLB draft. A lot of youth baseball in the area is really taken off. Uh, season championships, city, valley championships are being decided. Um, we also got some all area stuff to discuss this week. That's always a, a fun topic to address. Um, but first, we're going to talk about the MLB draft and a local player being selected. We had two players with Central Coast ties selected in the draft. Avery Tuck, who played two years at St. Joseph High School, was selected in the 26th round by the Astros. Then we had a San Inez grad, Nathan Thompson, selected in the 27th round, about the 817th pick by the Houston Astros. He's a left-handed pitcher. He graduated from San Inez in 2012, then spent two years at Hancock College, where he was a, a really their ace of the staff for those two seasons. And right after Hancock, he went to Oklahoma Baptist University and had two more stellar years there. He's kind of a, a soft-throwing left-hander. He doesn't know if he's going to be a reliever. He doesn't know if he's going to get a chance to start. But he, he's, been, he's found success everywhere he goes. I caught up with him earlier this week and kind of picked his brain a little bit, seeing where he'll go. You know, is he going to play some short season ball, A ball, and whatnot. So um, it was good to catch up with him and see, see what his prospects look like for the, for the upcoming season. It was on Saturday when you got drafted. Were you expecting to get selected? Can you kind of walk me through that whole day and what the process was uh, like uh, um, I mean, this weekend? Going, going, going into the draft, I knew there was a slight chance. Um, I had been in contact with Houston before. Um, last year, a few starts for the end of the year. They uh, threw some interest in me. And uh, and it was always up in the air. There's nothing guaranteed with the draft. It's all... Uh, you never know, really. But um, the day of, I, I thought, uh, I mean, I, in the back of my head, there was this thought, you know, this could happen. This could just, like, just, like, go on the draft. And, um, and then just before uh, Houston's pick in the 27th round, I get a call. So I get a text, actually, and uh, saying, saying, we're about to take you. And uh, I was just amazed. I was just it's crazy. It's a crazy thought. It's a it's an amazing feeling. What do you think's been the the reason to get you to this point? You know, this 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 past fall, going into my senior year, um, I had a lot. Uh, I mean, I, my dream as a kid is always to get drafted. And uh, going into my senior year, I was like, just my thought was just, you know, I'm going to put all my effort into this. My senior year. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, at least I ended my career on a good note. And um, the note I wanted to go go out on was um, just how I exactly how I finished. Um, so in the fall, I put a lot, a lot of work in with uh, my teammates at OVU, my pitching coach at OVU. He helped me out a lot with strength conditioning, um, mechanical work. It's just a, a lot went into. Um, the fall in this past summer and uh, got a finished product. Has there been some influential guys getting you there? Any influential coaches here on the Central Coast? All my coaches, starting from high school, um, even before high school, or during high school, my travel ball coach, uh, Vince Segesi, um, he had a lot of influence on me. Um, and then in high school, um, Dave Keen, Greg Ellis, um, Warren Dickey, they, uh, I knew they always believed in me, and then going to college, I had a really, really good opportunity at Hancock with with Stevens and Grego, um, and they they really helped me out a lot there. And then um, going to OVU was just just the best experience. Um, very, very good coaching. Already going into a winning program, um, a history of winning, and uh, it's just. Everything worked out for the best, and um, and then a few years ago, um, I've always looked up to Danny Duffy. Okay. Um, he's always been a good inspiration for me. Especially like coming from the Central Coast. Yeah, he's a he's a lefty like you, and you got he he throws a little bit harder maybe, but you guys definitely yeah he throws harder, but um, <laughs> just the fact that someone from the Central Coast at a Cabrillo High School can do it uh, is just means a lot 
someone. It's, uh, like me, he was someone to look up to. So now we go from a player who was selected in the MLB draft, and we're going to kind of talk about players who I'm sure hope to one day be selected in the MLB draft. Uh, a lot of the top high school players and our all-area team every year at the end of the baseball season, after the playoffs are all done, we, we go through the top players and see who, who's going to be you know, the MVP, the pitcher of the year, offensive player of the year, Golden Glove Award, and, and the coach of the year. And we, we've completed that. That's going to be published Sunday, so make sure to keep an eye out for that. But Jacob, uh, I know you covered so much baseball this year, especially Lompoc Valley, and Cabrillo won the LPL title this year. So obviously there's, there's going to be some players from Cabrillo on our all-area team. Can you kind of walk us through who are some of the kids from Cabrillo and the Lompoc Valley in general who, who are going to be on this all-area team? Yeah, it was. it's never easy to, to pick out amongst all of the area who, who are the players who should be on its, this type of a team. But Cabrillo made it kind of easy in a way because they had a great season. They won LPL. Uh, and so Philip Martin is our pitcher of the year. And uh, Dylan Maiden is our utility player of the year. And Jonathan Osborne, our head coach of the year. And... Uh, Dylan Maiden and Philip Martin, I think, fittingly are together on this team. They've been on varsity since they were freshmen. They made goals together as freshmen. Um, and Philip was just amazing this season. He, he could be counted on uh, to win his games. You put him out there every Tuesday during the season, and, John, and Coach Osborne would call us up for a score on games we couldn't get to, and he'd say the score first, and you instantly knew Philip did his job again. He shut down the other team. And Dylan was a star shortstop for them and has been for a while, easily their best hitter. And pulling all the strings for this team that had to do a lot of things just right to win as many games as they did because they didn't have an overpowering offense. Uh, Coach Osborne did a masterful job uh, getting this team to understand how to win games. Uh, so. Cabrillo has the most representatives on our all-area team in terms of our, our top honors with three, and deservedly so. Uh, they got a little unlucky uh, to be bounced out in the second round of CIF, but that does not take away w one bit what they accomplished to do so well. Uh, but we got to see a lot of great baseball players locally. We got to see some real stars. Um, I got to see some of the other players who are made our all-area top honors, but. Um, I know Kenny got a chance to see some of them even more than I did, and I'm curious as to what kind of Kenny took away from run, some of Which I thought it was uh, pretty remarkable of any Pac-8 League team. They made it to the quarterfinals. Um, no other team, including league champ San Luis Obispo, made it past the second round. Um, I think Matt Sauer had shutouts, I believe, in both of his starts. And he, in fact, he didn't allow a run in any of his postseason appearances. Uh, Jacob, I'm sorry, Jaden Libertas was, sorry, Jaden. Jaden Libertas was reliable as usual. And they had several other players who came through at some key times. Saying as we've all gone over that gut wrencher quarterfinal loss, no need to go over it again, I don't think. But yeah, as far as they did, Zach Tora was his usual solid self on the mound and under one ERA. Ryan McCarty was a very reliable catcher. And they had some other players who came through pretty consistently. So we, we had a lot of stats and variables to deal with to get this particular all area team together. Yeah, and I'm kind of curious. I know, Joe, you got a chance to talk to Santa Maria Baseball a bit, and they had such a great season. And the kind of a group of really talented sophomores this year in the area, maybe no better than the one Santa Maria had. Yeah, I mean, they were, they were just a great team this year, and, and we talked about how young they are. It's going to be great to see how they, the next two or three years, because I know some of their top players are, are, are freshmen. You know, Trevor Garcia is a sophomore, and he, he's – I'm sure has a spot on the all area team. You guys will find out Sunday if you check it out. Um, you know, just just so many top players from there. They made the playoffs and and they actually had a chance to win their playoff game. Um, you know, I think they lost it 1-0 on the road in the wild card round. So you can't overlook the season the Saints had. Um, you know, it was great being a grad of that of that school to see what they're doing over there and 
and it's really cool because it's not it's not just a one-year thing it's not like they had a great group of seniors I know Tristan Gutierrez was a top senior for them but the next two or three years is probably going to be a lot of good baseball being played at Santa Maria um, kind of looking at the other areas you know we talked a little bit about Rigetti and Matt Sauer Obviously, there's not much more we can say about those guys played really well, and they were the last team standing. Um, so, and, and we also mentioned Sandy Inez, which I think that program is headed in, in a great direction. We, we talked about Nathan Thompson, who's a Sandy Inez grad. Um, Zach Tora, uh, I think he got hurt in that, in that last playoff game, which is sad to see. I, 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 we haven't mentioned Zach a whole lot this year, but seeing him pitch the last four years was great. He helped them win it. He was huge winning a title two years ago, a uh, left-handed starter. I think he has a future playing somewhere. He's, he's had some great velocities. Zach Torr has been great watching watching him. I hope he's healthy. I'm not, I haven't been able to check in on him and see how he's doing. I know he, he had to leave the game early with an arm injury. Hopefully he's okay. And um, you know, the big news around here in the baseball circles has been UCSB baseball. And San Inez has a player on that team in Tommy Rowan who was on that CIF championship team in 2014. They won the D5 title. And that was a really interesting season for Tommy. He underwent Tommy John surgery later that year. He blew out his elbow in the first game of that year against the Royal Grande um, pitching. And he's also a standout catcher, and he's at UCSB now. And they're going to be playing in the call their very first College World Series this weekend. Everyone saw the, the, the walk-off grand slam home run. They were down 3-0 in the ninth inning. I think there was one out at Louisville. They were the home team, so in the bottom of the night, down 3-0. The Gauchos go to the College World Series, and the San Inez kid is on that team. So don't think we can say enough about the San Inez baseball program. Um, and I think you, you kind of talked about it earlier, Jacob, the success Cabrillo had this year. And I think the last time they won an outright LPL title was in 2007. You mentioned that. Um, and I think our all-area MVP that year was the one and only Danny Duffy. Cabri Cabrillo, great. Um, and he was all, Danny, it was interesting, Danny Duffy had a little inspiration toward Nathan Thompson, the San Inez kid who was drafted. You know, I was asking him who kind of had some influential people, and he brought up Danny Duffy. Um, so that was real cool to see that, that, you know, you can't have a tangible effect on, on the other kids here. So yeah, the great area, great area of baseball, and it was a lot of fun. You know, picking out all the area, all the all area kids. So, that all area team is coming up. We'll publish that for you over the weekend, and we're looking forward to that because that's just a little taste of who might make the all area team. But it's a full team, and that's the high school kids. But what about the next group? You know, they're still playing baseball. The Babe Ruths and the Little Leagues. Now they finished city series, valley championships, a bunch of different. Uh, games and, and teams in uh, the Lompoc Valley and the Santa Maria and Orchid areas uh, have finished up uh, Little League and uh, Babe Ruth City and B Valley tournaments and, so, and now they're going to be pointing toward the state and uh, over the weekend the Lompoc Babe Ruth 13 year olds finished theirs they, uh, their tournament the uh, older kids were playing this week and haven't crowned a champion just yet but the 13s uh, uh, have a champion now and it, uh, uh, the way the schedule broke down uh, Jacob got to go to a game and Joe got to go to a game and I got to go uh, to a game and on Sunday they had uh, actually two games it was the Chem Kids and V&J Truckers uh, for the Lompoc Valley uh, Lompoc City Championship and uh, you know, the Chem Kids went 3-0 and and were the uh, team coming out of the winners bracket undefeated uh, V&J Truckers uh, lost a game on the way to the championship, so they were coming out of the elimination bracket, which meant V and J had to win twice to win the championship. So uh, in the early game, actually, V and J went out to a seven to two lead after five innings of the seven inning game. It looks like they had uh, a shot at then going on and forcing a second game, but uh, uh, the Chem kids came back and scored a bunch of runs and. Uh, uh, tightened up the game to make it uh, seven to six, but then the uh, truckers scored an extra insurance run late and won that first game eight to six. That forced a winner take all championship game. Uh, and in that one, the Chem Kids uh, reverted to form and won it with a little bit of uh, breathing room, nine to three to win their second straight 
uh, Lompoc Championship uh, under uh, Chem Kids head coach Tommy Silva. Uh, and Tommy Silva then uh, becomes the uh, head coach for the 13-year-old Lompoc team. Now what they'll do is take all of the 13-year-old teams, uh, take their all-stars, they vote on the all-stars, and Silva then will coach that all-star team in the uh, district tournament and then in the uh, if they win it in the uh, uh, regional tournament so the 13 year olds will start their district tournament June 25th and they'll be in Atascadero the 14s actually have their own tournament that starts in Arroyo Grande on the 25th and the 15s will be playing right here in Santa Maria at Elks Field also on the 25th and on that same Sunday the Orchid uh, 13 year olds crowned their champion uh, and that was a matchup of the uh, Red Sox and Cardinals. Uh, reminded me of the 67 World Series. I, I got to go to my first World Series game that year in Boston. And uh, the uh, Cardinals defeated the Red Sox in that World Series, and they did it again in the Orchid Championship. And they, uh, the Cardinals had a young uh, kid named uh, Isaiah Navarro who started p pitched a complete game three-hitter 15 strikeouts out of the 21 outs. He struck out the side in the seventh inning to close out the game. Uh, and they went on to a 3-1 victory. So uh, congratulations to all those winners. And they will also be taking part in the uh, same state tournaments. And again, they'll break down the teams and uh, uh, go to uh, form all-star teams. And uh, uh, then, of course, the District 65 Little League uh, crowned their champion. Uh, Kenny was at that game, so I'll have him talk about it. But they will also be beginning the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the Santa Maria Little League uh, crowned its champion, uh, Orchid crowned its champion, and uh, then they had a Valley Championship, and Kenny's got that, and then the District 65 is going to take off this same weekend. So there's plenty more to go, and there's going to be baseball galore starting this weekend. But Kenny, why don't you give us a recap of how the Little League uh, finals turned out. Well, in the, it was a doubleheader on Saturday, starting off the Orchid Championship game. Uh, Orchid American scored eight times in the sixth inning. I'm sorry, I should say the Orchid American Yankees scored eight times in the sixth inning and wound up with an 11 to eight win. And in the Santa Maria Championship game, the Northside Pirates, this is, this is the major division, mind you. The Northside Pirates, they had eight errors, and yet they scored three in the, in the sixth inning, one nine to eight on a walk-off single by B.J. Rios. Both teams gave, in, gave a lesson in, I think, Little League, you are allotted 18 outs, and you're not done until the other team gets its 18th out against you. I thought a good lesson in perseverance by both teams. Jacob was actually at the Summer Valley Championship game, which the Pirates defeated the Angels 6-1, to one, I believe. To, um, they, I read Jacob's article. Apparently, the Pirates played a very clean game in that one, and that helped them get the win. So well, so well, done, well done by the Pirates to take the, take the Valley Championship. And moving on to a, a different topic, we, I'm sure we, we've talked about enough baseball today. So um, basketball, there's only one basketball series still going on, and that's the Cavs and, and Warriors. Um, so we, we saw a good game five earlier this week, and we got a game six coming up Thursday night. Um, you know, a lot of intrigue and controversy surrounding that entire series. Um, a lot of people were probably thinking that the series was going to be over. Um, Monday night with game five, but the Cavs pulled one out with uh, LeBron and Kyrie both going off for uh, 41 points apiece. The first time in the NBA Finals history that teammates scored 41 points. And I also think it was the first time someone scored 38 points and his team lost by more than 15 points, and that was Klay Thompson scored 38 points for the Warriors in a loss. Uh, Draymond Green was not in that game due to a suspension, due to surpassing the uh, flagrant foul, technical foul threshold. Uh, but he will be back for uh, the, the game six. He was back for the game six Thursday night. Um, so I just want to, Jacob, starting with you, what are, your, what are your thoughts on this series, and wh what do you think the Cavs 
did right, you know, to win Game Five, and how important do you think Draymond is? Do you think it comes down to to Clay and Steph, or the, or the main players for the Warriors? Or how do you feel about this series? You know, looking back and moving ahead. Yeah, I think Draymond not being there obviously is huge. Draymond is an attitude player. He's he's a player that. I think one uh, ESPN analyst, I think accurately is described as he's a pest in the paint. You know, he's he's not as big as Andrew Bogut, who unfortunately now is out for the rest of the se uh, rest of the playoffs. But Draymond Green uh, annoys the opposition to the point that it affects the game. And on top of that, he's a darn good player. Uh, but you know, with with the Warriors, it's all about whether or not the Splash Brothers can do their thing. And Curry's been a little bit hampered this series. You know, much speculation as to why. Um, but, you know, then you have Kyrie Irving, who drove on Steph Curry over and over again and just abused Steph Curry's defense, which isn't stellar, but it's not bad. Uh, he's no James Harden. But, you know, he, he just... I, I think the Warriors pull it out. I think the Warriors win it. They have uh, the same thing going for them that they've had all season, which is that when they're clicking, no one can stop them. And for me, I think it says a lot about the Cavaliers' locker room and team. Well, maybe not so much locker room, but just the dynamic of the Cavaliers the whole season, that they win the game. But all this talk on ESPN and elsewhere the next 24 hours is all the trades that Cleveland should make to be better next season. <laughs> How much better their team chemistry would be if they made trades like Kevin Love to the Knicks to get Carmelo Anthony. It just seems like, you know, that team wins because of amazing talent. It's, it's not the same kind of team that Golden State is. And for that reason alone, there's a part of me that wants Golden State to win. But I'm curious as to rest of what the rest of you guys think about it. Well, Draymond Green has said that if he had played game five, he guaranteed that they would have won. And Hindsight's he, good like that. But uh, he is a key player. You know, all these great championship teams have guys that you maybe don't like, but without them, you can't see them winning. You had a guy that's like Dennis Rodman back in the day, in his day. He wasn't a scorer, but he was a defender. He was annoying to the opposition. He could make you lose your cool and get you off your game. Uh, and you know, I think what happened to Green was he took the bait from LeBron James, and, and he lost his cool. He shouldn't have taken that bait, and then maybe he would have played in that game. But he, you know, uh, James stepped over him. The whole thing looked intentional to me, and Green took the bait, and he had a sit. And, there's all kinds of ways you can win a game, and if you can get one of their key players to sit on the bench and not even actually be in the building, be over next door at the Oakland A's game, well, then you just help your team. And so I think LeBron helped the Cavaliers win that, that game, but we'll see. Uh, the uh, Warriors have been able to win in Cleveland. Uh, they've shown the, they've won three games before Green was uh, uh, forced to the sidelines, so uh, it's not like they can't win, uh, and you're right, the, the game two is over and they're talking that they've got to get rid of Kevin Love uh, and the other players that they should be dumping right now to make them better. Uh, but um, uh, I think Green, uh, his return will give them not only a lift on the court, but a psychological lift. They, they kind of can rely on him so that the... the uh, Thompson and Curry can relax and play their game, and I think maybe we'll see a little bit better games out of them. But I'm wondering uh, if Curry's injuries have slowed him or limited him that he doesn't have all the movement that he's had. He doesn't look to be the same player these last couple games, especially the first two games of this, this championship series. So uh, I'm still thinking that the, uh, the Warriors are favored uh, but I'm sure they would like to close it out in Cleveland and come home for a parade. Yeah. All I want to see is a game seven. So I, that's what <laughs> I've been saying the whole the whole series. I like both the teams. I kind of find myself rooting for the Cavs for some reason. I don't know why. I've always liked LeBron for some reason. And I think game five kind of showed us how good these Cavs can be if Kyrie and LeBron both play at an elite level at the same time. I think that was an interesting thing. If, if those guys, I know that's like once in a lifetime performance from Kyrie, I think he shot like 75% from the field yeah. or something like that. But if those guys can play the next two games at that level, 
you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make for a great series. I know that. I don't know if they can beat the Warriors with Draymond Green there. Um, Kenny, I know you've, you probably have some thoughts on this whole series, and, and I'm sure you would well, like to see a Game 7, but I don't know if, if you think that's going to happen. I would, and um, I'm torn. Um, I do like Golden State, but um, my mom <laughs> was, was from Elyria, Ohio, which is 60 miles west of Cleveland, and she, she moved out to California, I believe, when she was 13. And I've always had a, I've had a spot, soft spot for the Rust Belt teams, particularly Cleveland. But anyway, I thought the whole circumstance surrounding Green's suspension for game five was dicey. To me, it looked like LeBron was the main instigator in the incident between the two. The NBA does not suspend Green after a kick to the groin on an opposing player. They do suspend him on, as I said, I thought, I thought under pretty flimsy circumstances when the, I mean, LeBron flat out stepped over him and I thought he was the main instigator. In fact, um, as commentators pointed out, any players around, NBA players around the league really got on LeBron for that. And for a player of LeBron James's standing, that is really atypical. And then what I thought was very amusing was more than one person is pointing to a, I guess, sort of conspiracy theory that the NBA suspended Green to try to extend <laughs> the series. And really, in that game, I'm not going to say that the Warriors would have won for sure if Green had played. Um, I think it was, in a way, tying one hand behind their back, particularly defensively, but still, Draymond can't take LeBron and Kyrie, who both scored 41. But um, put your nose to the situation, and it doesn't t smell too good for the NBA, whatever the circumstances, whether it was just the honest but dumb decision to suspend Green, or if it was um, really a con really conspiracy. I thought, as I said, I thought the entire circumstance was dicey. I'm not going to make a prediction on game six. Um, my track record, I mean, I did think originally that the Warriors would take the Thunder, but when that, the Thunder went up 3-1, I thought, oh, Thunder and six. Mm -hmm. But we all know what, knew what happened there. Yeah. So we'll, we'll just see how the rest of the series plays out. I do think, um, I do think that not, certainly not to belittle the other players, but I think whoever wins will depend on which of the big three for either team steps up the most. Yeah, I'm not sure we can say the Cavs have a big three right now with the way Kevin that, Well, playing, that's true. So, yeah. <laughs> More like two and a either way, Either way, it's going to be interesting to watch. I'm sure that the NBA loves it and media personnel love it too because I'm sure – they, ESPN, Fox Sports, everybody's been talking about it nonstop for the last couple of weeks. I know we've yeah. they've had a field the, day with it. <laughs> yeah, we've been talking about the NBA playoffs for about a month, okay. so we've enjoyed it. Um, hopefully, we'll get two more games out of it and a game seven. I think everybody loves the game seven, especially in the NBA finals. So it's going to be exciting to watch. Um, and that's all we got for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, one last thing, congratulations to those two players with Central Coast ties who were drafted. Avery Tuck, a former St. Joseph player who went on to play at Steel Canyon in the San Diego area, drafted by the Astros. Then Nathan Thompson, right after him, San Inez grad, drafted by the Astros. So congrats to you guys. Congrats to all the uh, youth little, little league guys who have won championships. And uh, it's, we're excited for the all-star season to heat up. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And um, Elliot, make sure everybody's following us online and checking out our print publications. Right, print, online. Thank you for watching Sports Talk, 805 Sports Talk. We appreciate your joining us each week uh, and uh, continue to watch us, but we'll have the Little League Championships. We'll follow all the local kids. There's a lot of other great things going on and we'll have it all for you uh, online and in print from the Santa Maria Times and Lee Central Coast newspapers. And we'll see you next week right here at 805 Sports Talk.